The purpose in this video is to demonstrate how to create a Gambrel truss using SketchUp for Schools. So what you're looking at here is a completed model of what it is that I'd like for you to create. You can see it's just a simple uh, four-piece assembly there that makes up the roof of the mini barn. Uh, total dimensions of this object is uh, eight feet long by four foot tall. And as you can see, it's composed of four individual pieces. So let's uh, talk about how we got to this point. So what I'm gonna do here uh, is begin a new drawing, a new model. And so the first thing I'm doing is zooming in on the origin point, and then I'm gonna delete this person using the delete key. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is to go ahead and create a rectangle at the origin point using the dimensions of eight feet, comma, four feet. Now, what I've done here is I've indicated the overall dimensions of the object that I want to create. But as you can see, this rectangle is not what we talked about earlier as being a Gambrel truss. So we're going to use this rectangle here to give us some guidelines or some uh, reference points to help measure the, the correct size of the object. So the first thing I want to do is grab the uh, tape measure tool. And I want to go ahead and click and drag a uh, guideline here to the midpoint and see the blue dot that's the midpoint so I just release the line at that point point. and then the next thing I'm going to do is take the guideline tool again I'm going to click and drag a couple of guidelines going out from the bottom midpoint to the upper corners just like that now once that's done then I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of lines using the line tool so I grab the pencil symbol icon and I'm just going to drag along the guideline that I just created here and then I'm going to type in four feet and then hit enter. Now, when I do that here, you can see my uh, cursors, the line is still attached to my cursor. So I want to go ahead and click on that line tool to kind of disable that. And then I want to create another line going out the opposite diagonal exactly four feet. Now, at that point there, once again, you know, the cursor is still, uh, the line is still attached to the cursor. So I want to cancel that. By clicking on the line and so now I'm going to go ahead and um, create some uh, guidelines here and the way I do that using the guideline tool just going to go ahead and connect these dots up just like that these endpoints something that looks like that now you can begin to see the overall gambrel shape or a gambrel uh, but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create the width of the two by four stock here. So I use the tape measure tool again to go ahead and create that. And I just wanna drag it along this here, straight out from that edge, uh, exactly four inches. All right, so now we've got the width of the piece here. And, and if you recall in the earlier portion of this video, talked about four individual pieces. Well, they're all the same size and they fit inside of this rectangle. But what I'm going to do is I'm only going to model one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and create my uh, line tool or pick up my line tool. And I'm going to create a line here. And then I'm going to create another line up to this point here like that. And then I'm going to take the erase tool and then I'm going to erase the majority of this drawing. And like I said, I like to create a template of the object I'm making to make sure it's going to be the right size and shape. So you can see here I'm erasing most everything. All right, so as a last step here for this particular segment, I'm just going to go ahead and take the push-pull tool, pull that upwards two inches, and that's the overall shape of the piece that I want. Now, one last thing, I want to go ahead and take my select tool there, which is the arrow, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a box, a selection box around this object, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to make a group, and that creates a single piece of geometry that I can select. So I think I'm going to stop here and pause this and go ahead and get set up for the next portion. Okay, well, let's pick up where we left off. I've got a uh, single truss piece here set up and ready to go. I've grouped it, so now it's just an individual piece of geometry. So what I'm going to demonstrate now is how to duplicate it and then rotate it in position. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go over here where it says uh, move. And so when we go ahead, we're actually going to do two operations or two actions with one operation. We're going to move it and duplicate it at the same time. So what I'm going to do is uh, press that button for move. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor over one corner of this, just like I'm demonstrating. And then I'm going to press the control key. Now watch the cursor very carefully. Changes to a plus sign. And what that tells me is, is that I'm ready to duplicate this as well. So we're moving it and duplicating it. So what I'm doing is moving it to the upper corner, just like that. And now I'm going to rotate it down. So I've got to go over here back to the move tool. Click there. Underneath that is the rotate tool. Now the rotate tool works in this manner. I have to first of all pick a pivot point for which this piece is going to rotate around. So I go up here where the two pieces are joined and then I just simply give it a left click. Now I have to give a reference point to begin the rotation there and so what I'm doing is clicking on this corner of the truss member just like is being illustrated and then I give it a left click again. And then once I do that then I go ahead and rotate the object down until it joins up with the other piece at the correct angle and then I give it a last left click. So you see there's how I've joined those here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a couple more of these here so you can see how this is done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the move tool, press the control key, I'm going to go up here, join them. I'm going to take the rotate tool underneath the move tool, set my pivot point, I'm going to rotate this down and then I'm going to do this a, a third time. So I need to move again and then I'm going to press control to go ahead and duplicate as I'm moving. Join those pieces together. Click my rotate tool again and see I'm having a little trouble with the rotate tool. There it goes. I want it to be blue. So that means I'm rotating in the Z axis. And then I click it one last time and that gives me my complete object. So one last couple of last things to do here. I want to go ahead and take my select tool and I want to draw a box around the entire assembly and I want to right click and group it. And then my last step here is I want to go ahead and rotate this up so it's vertical. So I take my rotate tool. Now, a trick with this tool here <clears throat> is I'm trying to rotate it in the uh, red plane or the X plane. And so what I have to do is kind of move my viewpoint around so I can see the, the horizon of the modeling space. And then I want to hold it, this uh, rotate tool in the uh, sky, basically, so it's red. And then I want to hold my shift key to constrain it to make sure it doesn't change on me while I'm moving. And then I attach it to my piece, my assembly. And then you can see here I'm moving along the green axis here. Give it one click and then rotate this upward 90 degrees. And so you can see your angle in the lower right hand corner and I give it one last click to set it. And so what I have to do now is go ahead and save this. So you remember, we're going to go up here to save and uh, we want to make sure that we save this to a, uh, we save it now, I've already saved mine and so it's saving back, but you got to create a folder for it and save this uh, object here and it'll go to your Google Drive. So that basically completes the truss. Last thing you need to do is to go ahead and uh, download this here, export it as a PNG, and that's the file that you want to upload to your Canvas assignment page. So it's a PNG file. It's going to be downloaded into your download folder in your Chrome drive, and then you want to drag that out of there, put it in your top level of your My Drive, and then upload it through the Canvas site through the submit window or submit button there. Okay, well, good luck with this.